This video is about evaluating powers and expressions. A power is repeated multiplication of the same factor. A power consists of two parts, a base and an exponent. So in this example here, you can see the base is the number 5, the red number 5. The exponent is a small number, and it's written superscript to the right and above the base. And here it's the number 3. And together, the base and the exponent is called a power. So we would read this expression as 5 to the third power. And what it means is repeated multiplication of the 5 three times. So that's how we read an exponent. It tells us how many times we're going to multiply our base times itself. So 5 to the third power means 5 times 5 times 5. And if you actually do the multiplication out, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125. So 5 to the third power equals 125. It's a shorthand way of showing repeated multiplication. There is a difference between what's on the left and what's on the right on this slide. The expression on the left contains parentheses around the negative 5 with an exponent of 4 outside the parentheses. What this means is that the base is a negative 5, and the entire quantity negative 5 is getting multiplied by itself four times. So if the base is a negative 5 and the exponent is a 4, the repeated multiplication that we're doing is negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. When you do this multiplication out, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 gives us a positive 625. On the right, there is no parentheses around the negative 5, which means that the base is just the number 5, the exponent is the number 4, and the negative sign is just sitting out front as if it's just a negative 1 being multiplied by the power. So the way that we would write this is a negative out front, and then the repeated multiplication is just 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. The negative is only affecting it one time. So what I typically do when I don't see parentheses, I evaluate the power first in my head, and then I just stick the negative back on front. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. And because there's a negative out front, the entire expression is negative. So it's a huge difference between the answer that we got on the left and the answer that we got on the right. So pay very close attention when you're evaluating expressions. If there are parentheses around the base, that means each time you write the base, you write the negative with it. If there aren't parentheses, then the negative is just affecting it one time, and so it'll just affect your final answer. So some further examples of this, we have 4 to the third power. It says evaluate the power. So I'm going to write the in-between step, which is showing what the multiplication is. And then evaluate means actually do the math. So 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. In example 2, I have a negative 2 to the fourth power. The negative is not in parentheses, which means it's only going to affect my final answer. I will write this as negative quantity 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Base is just a positive 2. Do the operation 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 first, which gives us a 16. And then the negative affects that final answer, or a negative 16 as the answer. And then in example 3, I have the entire quantity negative 2 being multiplied by itself four times. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. A negative times a negative times a negative times a negative gives me a positive answer. So this answer is positive 16. We, that's going to come in a lot of handy when we're evaluating algebraic expressions. So to evaluate an algebraic expression, they're going to give us some expression that has a variable in it, like x or y, and they're going to give us a specific number to plug in for that variable, and then we're going to simplify the result. So for example, evaluate 2x plus 4 when x equals negative 7. So in the expression 2x plus 4, x could be anything, right? There's no equal sign to tell us that it has to equal some certain quantity. But then they tell us specifically to evaluate it when x is negative 7. So that's what we're going to replace x with. When I replace x with negative 7, I'm going to use parentheses around it, where I'm replacing it, so that I can see that the operation is 2 multiplied by x. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And then I'm going to add the 4. Negative 14 plus 4 is negative 10. And that's the fully simplified answer. Use parentheses when substituting, as I just showed you, and always obey the order of operations. So in an example like this, which is a very long expression, 
you're going to replace every x that you see with the value that they tell you, which here is negative 1. After you've replaced every single x, then it's very important that you do anything in parentheses first, and then any exponents, and then you do multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction comes last. That's the order of operations. So we're going to start by replacing x with a negative 1. Negative 3 is still out front. There's already parentheses around this one. Put parentheses here to replace x with negative 1, and then minus 7. Now the whole expression is just numbers. There are no variables left. And now I simplify by the order of operations. Order of operations tells me to do whatever is inside of parentheses first. So I have a set of parentheses here. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. I'm not going to touch anything else yet. There's nothing inside those parentheses to do, so I'm not touching that yet. After you do what's inside of parentheses, then you do exponents. And I see that I have a positive 1 to the second power here. The negative 3 is not affecting that yet. It's going to get multiplied by whatever the answer comes out to. But just to evaluate the exponent is to do this. Base to the second power. So negative 1 times, I mean positive 1 times positive 1 is just a positive 1. So when I evaluate the exponent, it comes out to positive 1, and I'm not changing anything else yet. After parentheses and exponents, the order of operations tells us to do any multiplication or division that we see from left to right. So I see I have multiplication twice in this expression. So from left to right, I'm going to do the multiplication. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Then I have multiplication positive 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. Then I'm going to bring down the minus 7. And finally, last but not least, order of operations tells me to do any addition or subtraction that I see, also from left to right. I see that I have subtraction in this problem. I'm going to do it from left to right. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. Minus 7 is negative 16. Once you're down to a single number, that's the final simplified answer. And that is all.